everybody, it's me Margaret with a special shout out to Sister Margaret Mary because I know she's watching. Sister has been a long time member of the Sheepishly Sharing community and Tucker popped in last time to kind of give you an update. She was diagnosed with uterine cancer stage 4 and she went through all kinds of stuff including um, major surgery and a bunch of chemo and then when she had the CAT scan she was also diagnosed with stomach cancer that wasn't there before. So we're really concerned right now about her but there's big hope that she could be in a clinical trial so keep your thoughts and prayers on that for her. You'll remember longtime subscribers that we have helped her over the years with her um, fundraising. She used to teach music and she pretty much funded that music program on her own with um, our donations and things that she made for the crafts fairs that she sold. She did a really good job. So anyhow, uh, anyway, special shout out for her because I do love her. All right, moving on. You know what I got in the box? A yarn haul. All of this is yarn because I am in the process of kind of building back my stash since I really worked it down last year. My motivation was because we had to move into this Texas house and I think I did a really good job. Pat, pat, pat on back. So now it's time to get some more. Now how did I choose the colors? I chose the colors based on some projects that I think I may want to do and that is a corner to corner blanket. I've never done it. I had it on my goal list a couple years ago and I finally need to figure out how to do it. So I'll show you some of those that I looked at. But first of all, I need you to see this. This is a big order from Love Crafts and I told you before that I had never bought anything from them but I need you to see how it came packaged in these neat little uh, they're kind of a nylon type bag can you hear that and they would make good little project bags but what I ordered was all this brand something I have never had before and never tried before and it's called Premier Basics and I have to tell you I'm incredibly pleased with the way it feels and there's so many different colors and they are available by the way because a lot of Lovecraft's stuff they're out of they don't have it and they gotta wait for the colors to get back in let me interrupt myself because now that I check they're missing a whole lot of colors right now but that was not the case when I placed my order so keep watching I imagine they'll restock soon but this a lot of the colors were available for this brand I haven't worked with it yet but just from the feel of it I'm thinking this is going to be one of my mainstays for acrylic yarn I really really like it okay as you can see it's called Premier Basics with an X it's a number four worsted it's 359 yards 3 28 meters, 7 ounce ball or 200 grams. It's 100% acrylic. But you see this little thing that says tested and approved? That is a special thing talking about how many harmful substances that it does not have. So I know that uh, not everybody is into organics and the environment and things like that, but those of us who use acrylic because most charities do request it, it is something to be considered. Any kind of plastic is going to give off fumes and uh, different types of emissions, so to speak, on a regular basis. Whether you're in your car, the things that are in your car, all around your house, your furniture, the fabric. And here we have something that's actually aware of that and good for the environment. So this I would feel very comfortable using for babies too. And it does, it feels pretty good. I can't wait to work it up and wash it and then see what it feels like. This color is called purple. And I have great hopes of doing a corner to corner blanket that has a big bunny on it. Recruit, repeat Crafter Me has uh, done that pattern. I'll put a picture of it for you. Again, I only crochet and knit what strikes me at the moment. So if I change my mind on that, I reserve that right. But those are pretty, pretty colors. Let's see what some of these other ones are called. This one is called Sea Glass, and I think it's pretty aptly named. What is this yellow called? Let's take these purples. Out. Oh no, this is a different purple. This one is called Eggplant. See the difference? Let's compare those colors. See, so that's pretty. And this yellow is called lemon. And this is a pretty good size bag. Um, it is a nylon of some sort, at least that's what it feels like. But I'm kind of tickled with that. 
Okay, that was totally inefficient, so I had to take them all out so we could go through this. But notice that I only have one of these corals, and I did order two of them. So you can see coral, and I ordered two. I'll have to get in touch with them and tell them I'm missing that. But I did want you to see that they give you a loyalty discount. You get a 20% off with this code that's under my thumb right here. I don't want to share that. But um, that's, that's kind of cool. So keep that in mind. I did get all of this for like, I think they were $2 and something a piece. And I'm extremely pleased with the quality and the way this feels uh, considering. All right, so what are these other colors? This one is called crepe. And this one is called pumpkin. Although this does not look very pumpkin-y, does it to you? It's kind of it look like my pants? No, not really. It's just kind of a uh, rusty color, actually. I would think pumpkin would be much more orange, but whatever. Then we have this one called, what? Royal Blue. That's apropos. This one is called Teal, another apropos. And this is called Aqua, another one aptly named. And of course, we saw this one a minute ago. That's lemon, that's sea glass, this pale pink, which I love. This looks like a ballet pink. Oh, it's called ballet. And this is fuchsia. So I guess they didn't get real creative on their names. Um, lilac, eggplant, and purple. And that's all purple back there. So, um, I am really pleased, and I need to get these and get going on that. But first, I need to call Lovecrafts and tell them they owe me a coral. Update. It was a very simple form that I filled out with my purchase order number and exactly what was wrong. And then I got this email back that says, okay, must have been a mistake, and we're sending a replacement. So that was very simple and good customer service. Also, from Repeat Crafter Me, this Rudolph has caught my eye. Now, I already owned the yarn that should be able to complete this, so I didn't have to buy anything new for that. But if I like corner to corner, I'll do this one second. I think I want to try one of the bunnies first. Sleepy kitty. And speaking of Buzzy, so I showed you my picture of Bentley not too long ago that my friend Kristen did for me. But look up at the top. Do you see up here? That's a new addition. That is a picture of Buzzy. And it was done by Judy Pettit, who is a member of the Sheepishly Sharing community. Judy actually has a business doing pet portraits, but she shared this with me. And I was absolutely floored by how much it looks like the picture that I sent to her. It's actually taken uh, Buzzy sitting up on that, that right just above where the picture is. That's her favorite perch. And so there it is, which I think will be so cute when Buzzy pops up on her perch. It'll have her picture just below it. Now Judy did not ask me to, but I'm going to put her information in the uh, description box below in case you want a pet portrait. She didn't do this because she was trying to promote her business. She did this just as a gift for me. Isn't that adorable? So here's a question for you. What do you think of my new makeup technique? My natural makeup? <laughs> this is not eyeshadow. <laughs> this was me having a run-in with a dog leash. I was keeping the neighbor's dog for them, and Milo is adorable. He's a little small dog, but he's very young. He's just a year old, and Bentley needed to eat, and I didn't want him to get in Bentley's food because Bentley has old man food, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, hmm, let's see. So I put Milo on his leash, and I, it's a retractable leash with one of those plastic candles, and I put the retractable part in the drawer, and that was fine, and he was just kind of playing around in this little area. He didn't even know he was on the leash. It was great. And then one of the cats came down the stairs. <laughs> and I saw it coming because Milo doesn't hurt the cats, but he wants to be with the cats. And so he's always so happy and energetic. And he just made a little beeline to go check out the cat. And I turned to try to catch that leash in the drawer and the leash flew out and whacked me right there in the eye. <laughs> So um, I'm lopsided. So this this eye has no eyeshadow on it whatsoever. That's just my normal discoloration that that happens. Um, 
you know, discoloration is why we wear makeup in the first place, right? To get everything even toned and whatever. But I'm going to go see if I can't try to sort of match that, maybe tone this down a little bit with some makeup. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and I look like a clown, so don't laugh at me. I have not had this much makeup on my face since 1982, when that was the fad. But that's just so dark. I had a hard time trying to match it, and I can't. So, I didn't have time to wash my face and start again, so we'll just have the comedy hour. Okay, I'm holding three hats in my hand, and what these are... <laughs> They were inspired by things I had done in the past. I kind of just glanced through some of the thumbnails of my older videos and then popped into the edit section where I could see what I had written, what, what patterns I had linked in that description box. And so I thought, hmm, I'm going to look back at some of these patterns and see if I still like them or if, if there's something I can do to change them into something I like more or anything like that. So the first one that I ran across was this. It was called a cross stitch hat, I think. It was a pattern by Bob Wilson, Bob Wilson 123, and it actually was a top down hat. Here's the cross stitch, if you can, you can see that. It's a neat little stitch. It actually has little holes in it, so I think it might be better suited for, say, the spring, and I have yet to sew this in. I forgot to do that. I got to looking at it, and all of this was just a basic flat top increase. And then about right here is when the pattern picked up. And as I look at it now, back then it didn't bother me in the least, but when I looked at it now, I was like, you know, I, I don't really like that. <laughs> so what I did was start from the bottom, and I made a ribbed brim, uh, you know, like this way where you build it like this. And then... I started the cross stitch this way. That way it made the increases easier at the top. So I didn't really write down anything that I did. If there is any interest in this, I'll, I can show you how I went about doing that. I do like it. I don't think it's a particularly warm hat per se. It would be great for the in-between times, so fall and spring, because of the holes that you have in it like that. But it's a great pattern. I like I like the stitch. Okay, so then I saw that I had done this one, which is the Brainwaves beanie. And I do love this. This is an all-time favorite. I think I'm talking 2012, 2013 is when I found these, uh, when I looked back at these and sparked my memory. This is an awesome pattern. I will link it below. It's a paid for pattern and it's it's very versatile in that you can use three colors as I did here. You can use two colors. You can use four colors and she tells you how to do that in the pattern. But there's one thing that I don't like about it and I couldn't fix it and that was the seam. Now I know how to make a nice straight seam. I know how to make that seam sort of disappear uh, as a matter of fact, I shared my tips with you in that video that I did about troubleshooting hats. But I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't use those specific techniques on this hat because placement is very, very important. In order to make these stack properly one upon the other, you have to be very careful about how you place these. And there was just, uh, I think, I'm sure that I, it can be done. I just, at the time, it wasn't clicking, and I really honestly didn't take the time to try really hard to do it. So be aware that it will be your typical seam if you do this. And it is a pay-for pattern. Did I say that already? But I think the pattern is so cute that it, you know, you just kind of forgive that. It's, it's just such a precious pattern. So... Uh, brainwaves beanie there's that and if you do it and you figure out a better way to do that same let me know and then this one in last week's video I was talking about actually this hat I knitted this hat in a set this there's no pattern for this this is just a basic cast on one by one rib and then stockinette stitch up at the top um, I was using this yarn, and I was making the observation that the way this yarn is spun uh, looks like you're holding two strands together. And in another video, I had done that, 
and other things trying to make different variations of a gradient like a homemade gradient type hat and this was taken this idea was taken from one of those that I showed now what I did in that one was a white to a cream and it looked really really good I may have done something differently here so that it didn't look like spikes I don't remember but in this case what I have a pa I have a tutorial for the spiked mesh I never can say it spiked mesh stitch hat and it what it is is plain increases down to about this point and then you have a band of color and I think I used like three colors maybe four right here and then your different color brim down at the bottom I really like that hat but when that white to cream hat I used the solid mesh stitch from all the way up here all the way down and I couldn't remember how I did that <laughs> and I want to tell you that it was incredibly tricky trying to come up with a way to make this look right what happens is this is bulky you're you're actually reaching into a stitch below like a, a row not the next row but the row under it that's how you get the spike and so when you're doing your, that stitch in your increases, you're getting a thicker fabric. So I had a little method that worked and it seemed to be going very well. And then I'd do a row and it be, would begin to wave. And so that tells me there's too much yarn right there. I have got to redo it and do fewer increases. So I rip out that row and I kind of modify it and then I'd do the next row based on the same patterning that I had in my head. No, it would be too wavy. So I'd rip that one out and do it again. Basically what I ended up doing was kind of a um, gut increases. <laughs> I would look at it and I'd say, you know, this probably should be an increase four by themselves, an increase four by themselves, but I think what I'm going to do now is an increase and seven by itself <laughs> and I would just kind of look at it as I would as I would go and that's how I did it so that's very hard to write down to explain to y'all so I have to put a little bit more thought in it before I would share this but I love the way it came out my, my gut increases so uh, you know and another thing that I really like about this hat is the texture that it makes. It's incredibly warm. It's almost like a thermal type stitch. Can you see how it has the raised and then the little dips, the little valleys, just like thermal material does, you know, like old fashioned long underwear. I hope I've not been showing my bra in that whole clip. So anyway, this hat is something that I want to continue to work on until I have something that is less gut and more finite to share with you <laughs> and the combinations of colors that can be used are endless too so anyway there's that and then we had this hat this was the riptide beanie from Melodora's creations it's a free pattern and what I changed was I made it do these ridges all the way on to the top the original one increased flat which was much easier by the way but I thought, what would it look like if we added ridges all the way to the top? And I did that. And another thing I didn't like about this was the seam. This is the way the seam is normally done, and it's a little bit more prominent. By the time I got down here, I was doing a better seam. Not sure if you can see it under these lighting conditions, but... um. But this turned out good. I really, I, I do like this. And this was actually a wool. It's Peyton's Classic Wool. I bought this 10 years ago, or <laughs> I don't know. It was a huge sale. And I haven't used it, obviously. So I pulled it out to try it out. It is just a basic wool. It's a little, a little rough, like wool is, as you would expect, while you're working with it. But that means that you can soak it in some fabric softener or hair conditioner, because wool is hair. It's actually from the sheep and it softens up like that so this is an awesome wool it's still made today with a different label and it cost about I think it was 
nine dollars on the Yarnspiration site. This is an awesome wool. I got this on sale and it does go on sale at Joanne and places like that and I think I probably paid something ridiculous like two dollars for it. So if your charity that you knit or crochet for requires only wool like military for example then this would be an awesome choice and it comes in a good variety of colors. I'm going to leave a link to this free pattern down below. Of course it's the one without these ridged increases at the top. Top. It's just going to be plain like this, which is great. I mean, I like it fine. It's very difficult for me to tell you what I did here without showing you. But anyway, there you go. Riptide Beanie from Melodora's Creation. You'll remember that I made this blanket, this Christmas blanket, and it called for pom-poms to be put on the corners. And pom-poms were a cute choice because it looked like a Christmas ball. Get it? Well, we had a problem with Buzzy attacking the balls, the pom-poms, and tearing them up. So, longtime friend, Laura Pud, Laura, Laura, Laura Pud, I don't know how to say her username, but she suggested this pattern. It was a paid-for pattern, and I did try it out. It's right here. Buzzy cannot tear it up, which is really good. But unfortunately, it just didn't have that Christmas ball look. So I'm glad she introduced me to something new and different, but it's not going to work on this. However, another longtime subscriber, Jenny Lee 63 suggested faux fur pom-poms. Now this one has been sitting out and Buzzy has attacked it on several occasions and it holds up beautifully. The color is slightly off, but I think it's, it's fine. And this will look more like the Christmas ball that it's supposed to be. So thank you, Jenny Lee, that worked well. And thank you, Laura Hood, because those are both excellent suggestions. I'm gonna put them on with this kind of safety pin so that I can take them off to wash it. But uh, I don't know, I may end up doing it permanently later. But right now, that's the plan. Let's try it out. Interesting note is I'm glad I ended up getting a package of six. See how small the little loops are right there? I can't find one at all on this one, so it's a good thing I had, you know, extras to choose from. Ta-da! Looks cute! And one quick observation is I decided on only one color for the trim of this blanket. I, well, there was a, sh I had a shirt on that was similar to this color in that last video while I was talking about it. And me and another viewer, I'll pop the name in here because I'm drawing a blank right now, both thought the same thing, that this color would be great on here, and I do like it. So, and now let's talk about this yarn. This is yarn I got from the Dollar Tree. It's called Premier Just Yarn. It's a worsted. It's 100% acrylic and uh, nothing more special than that. But I do love the texture. It's an awesome yarn. And that brings me over here to this Premier yarn, the one I did the haul for. I've since broken it out and begin using it. And remember that this one has that um, fewer chemicals and all that kind of stuff that's with it. So I really do like it. I have begun the bunny blanket with the corner to corner and it's going pretty well. See this is the the bottom of the bunny. That's his nose and the smile like that. So making progress. Oh, but most importantly, I love working with this yarn. It's awesome. So I hereby declare this is my new favorite brand of acrylic yarn. The price is right and it's better for the environment and better for people. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that I'm all into environmental concerns and I eat organic and all that kind of stuff. So I spent a little time checking out this Oak Cotex company and I'm really, really impressed that Premier went the extra mile to partner with this team. Notice that the yarn has the label called Standard 100. And in a nutshell, this means that when they test, they take into account, quote, numerous regulated and non-regulated substances which may be harmful to human health. In many cases, the, the limit values for the Standard 100 go beyond national and international requirements. So they go above and beyond. You know, we love to think that harmful substances aren't allowed to be used, but unfortunately that's just not the case and certainly an issue for another day. But Premier is aware of it and I'm quite impressed by that. So yay Premier. Who 
did that? Was that you? And speaking of entertaining yourself, if you like matching games, come play this with me. I need some good people on my team so we can climb the ranks. I recorded myself playing so you could just see what it was like. And they say things like this are good for increasing neuroplasticity in our brains. But I just think it's fun. I don't know how this suggestion popped up, but I love Harry Potter. And so I jumped on this game and it's really good. It has a nice little variety of puzzles, just different enough to keep you challenged. And like any game, you learn as you go, but I'll show you a few of these things. If you match five gems, you get this neat little magic bag. I don't know what it's supposed to be called. And what it does is take all of one color off the board. Or if you wait, um, you can see if you can align one of the tools like this lightning bolt thing. And it will multiply those like that. See, it's right beside it. Boom, clears it off. And here is a winged key and it multiplies those and they go around and bust things off the board. Now that little kitty, he's my pet and I've just recharged him enough. And see how you can move this all around so whatever those highlighted areas are, they'll be busted when I decide where to put him and hit confirm. It's like, good job, kitty. So you don't get to use him again until you charge him back up. And there's different pets to choose from that have different skills. And if you look up at the top, that's what you're trying to accomplish. You have to make the, the book drop down. You're trying to get all those purple color gems, whatever, set, whatever number they give you at the beginning. And then you have to clear all the ice blocks. So right now there's a purple ice block. If I could get that little magic bag to have a purple next to it, that would solve my problem. I need one purple gem and one ice block. And right here, it's giving me a hint, and I missed it. But I had so many moves left over that I was safe in this. I ended up winning. I used the green. Ta-da! And so I got all my goals accomplished. Victory! Yay for me! And I got three trophies, which translates to league trophies. And that is what I'm saying. If you join our league, we can all move ahead faster to get up to higher levels. So that's why I'm throwing this out there in case you like to play games like this. I love the animations on it. Look, one of the goals here is to move across the chessboard. And if you'll remember in Harry Potter, with Wizard's Chess, uh, it's kind of a violent game because the pieces move and, and act like real warriors. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you with images of another game, and that's us learning to play bocce ball. <laughs> it's been really fun. And regardless of the fact that the Texas mask mandate has been lifted, we still wear our masks around here. So keep safe, everybody. It's not over yet. Yeah, there it is right there. So that's all this clown has to share with you. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll talk to you soon.